Hello and welcome back to Gary's Garage and in this episode we're going to finish off the wiring that I've been doing over the last couple of episodes and fingers crossed I won't have broken anything. If you were watching last time, you'll have seen that I made some pretty good progress with doing the rest of the wiring inside the car. There's still the front to rear loom to finish off and also the one that goes through the wheel arch over on the passenger side and feeds the front end of the car. So I'm gonna move on and do those first and then I'm gonna see whether I can get the engine running. So I think that is the majority of the bulk of the wiring at least finished. There's still the uh, connectors onto the radio panel, underneath the heater controls. I'm not entirely sure yet what I'm going to do about that panel, whether I'm going to just remake a little one or whether I'm going to make a whole kind of centre console arrangement on top of the tunnel. I'm not 100% sure yet, so I'm just going to leave those as they are. I've securely attached the plugs that come up through the bulkhead so they're not going to rattle around and potentially short out. And the, so that means the engine is basically ready to go. The dash and all the dials are basically ready to go. The front panel lights, with the front panel which is currently outside and has been for the last six months, that's basically ready to go when I am ready to bring that back in. The rear lights are almost ready to go. I just need to add a ground. What I do need to do though is sort out the fuel pump and that means a fuse and a relay located up the back coming directly off the battery, which means I need to relocate the battery. And I'm also moving the charge cooler pump from the boot to the front of the car. And I've got the plug for it here loose with just tails on it. So I need to get the charge cooler bracket from the back and put that in the front. So I think the charge cooler pump is gonna be the next thing I'm going to tackle or the fuel pressure regulator. One of the two. Right, so that's the bracket removed from the boot, and here's the pump. And that sits on there, something like that, in, well, insert orientation here. And my plan is that, obviously, the charge cooler on the top of the engine here will be piped down, sort of through this gap here. There's gonna be the radiator across the front. And what I want is the pump kind of tucked down in here somewhere, maybe in this little gap here inside the chassis. So sort of around these uh, radiator pipes, but mounted to the chassis. And with the pipe, sort of the inlet coming from a reservoir or from the bottom of the radiator which is going to be here and then obviously the outlet going up and into the charge corner itself. Okay so I've decided where I'm going to put it and the bracket will go on about that way and then it will tuck down on the chassis rail about there. So obviously that's something I'm going to have to do with the engine out really. So with my plan for the charge cooler mounting underway, I'm going to move my attention now to the fuel pressure regulator, which has been sat here for a couple of months. 
So the plan is to make up another one of these aluminium covers to go over this hole, bolt this to it and hook up the return line that goes off under the car and then the fuel feed needs to go into the rail, through the rail, out and into here. And as it happens, the lid from these grinder cutting discs is an almost perfect fit for there. So I shall use that as my template. the engine out to do that. He's only held in on two mounts. So that's the fuel hose is now mostly hooked up. I just need to push this one that goes from the tank onto the fuel rail onto the barb a little bit more. That's probably going to be an engine out job to do that though. Again. But the return into the regulator and then out from the regulator back to the tank is all done and everything there is secure and tight. I just have this one vacuum hose that needs to go onto here and probably needs rerouting slightly and shortening but for the moment that will just go on there. And the electrical connector that I put on a few months ago for when it was originally up here is probably going to need shortening eventually but for the moment I'll just live with a little loop of wire. So that's the fuel system at the engine end sorted. It's mostly done at the back end, but I'm gonna need power to the fuel pump. So let's move to the back, sort out the battery tray and the rest of the wiring in the boot. So next thing I want to do is move the battery tray from over on this side over to that side. Now that is where I had it for the first three years of the car on the road and I had the charge cooler pump over this side but a couple of years ago I decided to swap them over just because the charge cooler pipes as you may remember ran through that side of the car so it seemed silly bringing them all the way across to this side just to run them back again. So it should be a fairly simple task of reinstalling this plate with these two supports. There's already holes in the floor and in this plate for it and then the battery can go back over there. The battery cable can be run around the back of the tank over to there. And then that gives me a nice easy route up sort of that way for the fuse and relay to power the fuel pump that's inside the tank. So I've wired up this relay. I've got another relay that's got the proper bracket on so that that can be fixed probably to that hole there where I had relays before and that will run round to follow the line of the cables and onto the battery round here. So the next thing I need to do is hook up the ground to the pump and also this goes off to this yellow cable here goes off to the fuel level sender on that side of the tank and that also needs a ground as well. So I think it is now about that time, the scary bit, which is going to be to try to power some stuff up. Uh, so I think first I'm going to have to put the gauges in. That's just clip in, rest them in place. Then I will disconnect the plugs that go to the engine. 
because I need to load the ECU with new settings for all the wiring changes I've made so I don't want any power going to the engine just yet and then I can start with accessory and just make sure that I get the accessory so things like the cigarette lighter powers up and probably nothing else and then I will try just ignition which should mean then that the ECU powers up and all the other circuits such as the indicators and wipers would work. Um, I can test the tail lights and brake lights uh, just without the ignition on or accessory on, nothing on the key at all. So I think I'll start with that, <laughs> start from the minimum and then once the ECU is powered up and I can connect to it with the laptop, I can load the new settings onto it that I've been tweaking as I've been making the wiring configuration changes. And it's also got the new dwell settings for the Audi R8 coils that I fitted. So all of that lot needs to be loaded. There's so the wiring changes. And then once I'm happy with that, I can plug in the plugs for the engine and I should then start to see some of the sensors powering up into life so I should get the throttle pedal and the throttle position I should get one of the temperature sensors the other couple aren't wired up yet and then I should be able to maybe try seeing whether I can start it once I put a fuse in the fuel pump relay at the back but if I can get it cranking at least and just make sure that that bit still works and that I'm getting some kind of reading on the laptop, then that will all be good. So I'm just going to make a start and let's see what works, what doesn't and what I'm going to need to fix. Okay, so that is dash in and engine disconnected. Now I'm going to go and connect the battery. And hopefully there's no bangs and no flames. Crossing my fingers and my toes and my arms and my legs. Might be a bit difficult to walk though. Uh, let's just do fingers. Okay, and in three, two, one. We are connected. Battery's connected. No bangs. No smoke. Yet. So I think the first thing I'm going to try is the tail lights and the brake lights because I'm fairly certain they should both work with the ignition off. Well, tail lights definitely, not sure about brake lights. Okay, so we should see that brake light, that tail light, the number plate light, and that tail light come on, hopefully. Let's see what we get. Yes, <laughs> yes, we have light, we have light. And is that brake light working as well? I can see one brake light working, but not the second. Okay. That's okay. One thing wrong so far. I'll make a note and I'll come back to it later. Okay, so next thing will be, are the indicators going to work? And with the hazard light switch, they should work with the ignition off. So let's give that a try and let's see what we get. 
Okay, we have one working. Ah, we just have a dodgy wire over here somewhere. So that's something that needs sorting out. Basically it's working, but we have a slightly loose connection here that just needs fixing. That's okay, we can deal with that. Okay, so near side indica rear indicator is a bit dodgy. Right, so next let's see if the accessory line works. And that is going to be for the cigarette lighter. It's probably about the only thing that will power up. So I've got my multimeter ready to see whether we get 12 volts on. Uh, not that one, but that one there is cigarette lighter. So let's give this a try. Okay, so that's in there. Let's make sure that's on the voltage. Okay, we have nothing at the moment. So my accessory line then is not working. Right, so now let's see if the laptop will talk to the ECU. So let's go on to ignition. Let's see if we can connect. ECU connected. Okay, so we've got the check engine light was, uh, there you go, was flashing. Yep, so we've got some kind of fault somewhere. So, see, I'm going to need to load my new config now. So, select a yes to open the file and download the settings to the ECU. Yes. So this is now sending to the ECU. from your store. Okay, so you connected. And I think that the TACO just did its power on sweep. So let's have a look. Power off. So we're disconnected. There you go. Power on sweep. We have a check engine light. And let's see what faults we've got. So we have four analog inputs at ground. So they're not connected. And we've got three temperature sensors not connected. So something somewhere has gone wrong. So I'm lo missing the engine coolant temperature which should be connected. The pre and post turbo temperature should not be connected, so that's fine. Lambda 1 and Lambda 2 are not connected, so that's fine. But I'm missing uh, th throttle position sub, which is true because actually it's not, the throttle body is not connected. Uh, I shouldn't have inlet air temperature though because they're all connect disconnected. So somewhere I've got my inlet air temperature wrong and my throttle pedal is reading incorrectly somehow. But what's my accelerator pedal doing? Yep, accelerator pedal is good. So that bit's working. I've got... Let's have a look, where's my digital inputs? My brake switch is not working, my clutch switch and brake switch are not correct. And it thinks that my start position is active, well that definitely isn't. 
So I've got a few things here that are slightly wrong. So I will try to figure out the ones that are on the car side and leave the engine watt side ones for a moment. With the ignition on as well, I have no indicators. And with the ignition on, if I turn the lights on, the dash goes off. So something again is not right there. So a couple of minor things. Um, wipers, however, work. So what I'm going to do now is move on to plugging in the uh, engine and let's see what happens. We have throttle position sensors happening, so let's check our electronic throttle. Okay, so it's making a bit of a racket. It's moving, so that's a good thing. Making a nice whining noise. So we've still got sensors not working. That's partially expected, two of them aren't even plugged in. However, engine coolant temperature should be working. And that is not. What have we got voltage wise? We have zero volts. Oh no, we've got 0 0.49 volts. Okay, so fuel pressure appears to be working okay. Starter works. <laughs> Fuel pump control relay appears to be working as well. So if I put a fuse in that fuel pump, in theory, the car might run. Uh. Although I ha do have that fuel hose that's not on as well as I would like, so I might leave that for the moment. So time for another progress update. It's been about seven or eight hours for me since the last clip and I have tidied up a couple of circuits the ignition switch and uh, starter were on the wrong wires the indicators weren't working properly the brakes weren't working properly and most of those now are sorted so with ignition on we have indicators left and right flashing a bit quick because of the missing bulbs at the front we have the headlight circuit mostly working including a main beam which you can just about see over the front there and that's also correctly showing the blue main beam indicator on the dash which has been inverted for the last five years so to sort that I had to add in another relay because of the way that it switches grounds and the dash is expecting 12 volts. All fun and lots of looking through wiring diagrams. The indicators was the biggest one because when I was repinning it I managed to put one wire, one pin over in one connector and that just messed the whole thing up. But after looking through this wiring diagram three or four times and then finally on the fourth go noticing that I'd got a pin wrong it's sorted but that means that unfortunately with trying to sort those few little issues out I have run out of time and I'm not going to be able to start the engine today so unfortunately that's going to have to wait till next time so thank you very much for watching me struggle yet again with another episode full of wiring and I'll catch you next time on Gary's Garage. Bye.